Hey guys, welcome back to Full Circle with Joyce. And uh, I'm here with my next guest. Her name is Georgina Naomi Mudoni, and she's a foodie and an alumni of BIHC. Uh, Karibu sana to the show. Sandy. Great to have you here. Um, so you actually, you say you're a foodie, uh, have always loved uh, cooking, or is that something that you uh, developed, uh, you know, through certain experiences? I would say since childhood, because I've loved cooking since I was small, uh, hiding away from my mom when she's going to work, cooking for my cousins, and mm -hmm. then it just grew in me. Feeding people makes me happy. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And is that what then led you to then pursue a culinary arts degree? Yes, it did. Okay. Tell me about a culinary arts degree, because I think people just, maybe they don't understand what goes into it. Uh, it's pretty intense, uh, as far as I understand. Um, is it learning every different type of cuisine, or do you choose specific ones to focus on? Yeah, actually in Boma we have a dual diploma. I don't think in Kenya there are degrees in okay. culinary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they teach us how to cook and different cuisines, but you not only learn how to cook in the kitchen, you also taught service, management. You have to learn everything that works around the mm -hmm. hotel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so at this point in your, I guess, experience and uh, career and studies, uh, what are you comfortable most with preparing? Uh, I'm actually, I'm more of a person who, my strengths are flavors. Okay. And I love a good challenge. You can give me like something like a beetroot. I'll have to think on how, how I can feed it to you. So I would say um, I'm a chef who doesn't go by the books. Because I want to, my goal is changing the culinary aspect, whereby at a typical day you wouldn't just sit down and say, give me ugali, nyamachoma, and kachumbari. Would think of something different that I would give it to you. You can taste it and then you can tell me if you like it. Okay. You're so more of a more open minded person. Okay. Yeah. So tell me some of the things that have stood out to you that you've created, some of your creations as far as flavor, interesting flavor combinations you've done in the past or things that you even want to try out. Mm, I'd like to try out anything and everything. I love traveling. Uh, at least I've uh, gone to the internship with BOMA uh, USA at the USA. I went to two different states. Mm -hmm. So it, it was a mind opener. Mm -hmm. And also going at the YCO in India and meeting 55 different young chefs, you tend to see different things. Because okay. I, wasn't, I wasn't open to tasting something like a shark, mm -hmm. snails, mm -hmm. but being in the industry and you're given something, you need, to you, know you, you need to know how to work it out because yeah. the first day that we en I entered in the kitchen I worked with my chef she said you have to taste everything in the kitchen that you can know how you can make it because mm -hmm. if you understand the flavors you can know how to balance it okay yeah. and that's big in cooking balancing of flavors in yeah. fact maybe that's part of the biggest essence I guess you could say of, of cooking mm -hmm. and so if, if you were to give a tip to somebody who really just wants to improve maybe they, they don't need to become a, a culinary chef or expert or anything like that but they just want to improve their home cooking what would be a tip that you'd give them as far as how to really get good flavor in your food but also how to enhance the existing flavor in your ingredients yeah I would say cooking is more of a it's also meditation because you, you have to have the passion and you also if you love food, you'll definitely love how to know how to make it. If you go inside a kitchen and maybe sometimes you're like, I don't know how to, you're given a radish, you're like, I don't know what I can do with it. I would generally ask people, first of all, taste it. Never be afraid to taste whatever you're given so that you can know what you want to make. Because a lot of people um, are close-minded. A lot of people have the, cl the a fist that since uh, they'll be like, my friends have told me about mushrooms, I don't like it. I urge people to taste things before they judge it. Just like you, you told, never judge a book by its cover. Mm -hmm. Yeah, same thing applies to the food. Okay. Yeah, it has to be, you, you have to love it. Okay. Yeah. So when we're talking about balancing of flavors, what exactly does that mean? Is, does it mean if you taste something, as you're saying, and it has more of a, a sour, acidic taste that then you add sweet? If it's salty, do you, like, what does that actually mean? What does balancing flavors actually entail? Balancing flavors entails that, to me, it means that once you've tasted, you've tasted something, you'll actually know how you love it. Because some people like, love sour. 
some people love sweet and sour some people li like it chili bitter so once you taste it you're going to know what you want to combine it with okay yeah so if you want to add some some sweets to it you will actually tell yourself what you love okay and if you love making something and i tend to ask people serve what you can eat never serve what you don't like mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, let's take a look at some uh, images from your Instagram page, which is called Flavor Fetish underscore Ke. Flavor Fetish underscore Ke, and these are just uh, some dishes that you've prepared and posted up on your page. So let's take a look at those now. All right. So maybe you can walk us through a bit of what we're looking at here. Yeah. Like on the first page, I was just sitting at home. I had a friend over. And we didn't have to make like a breakfast. I made for them a toast, and that is some avocado and homemade chili. Mm -hmm. And uh, sunny side up, but well done. Mm -hmm. Chicken, ah, sorry, egg. Mm -hmm. And then the second page is actually ice cream that I made from home. But okay. you, know, you don't need an ice cream maker. Those are cakes. Okay. I have the meatballs that I make my own way. Mm -hmm. And uh, generally, my page is more of showing people cooking is, cooking is so easy. It's an art. Mm -hmm. actually simple things like that you can see githeri that I used I used the uh, minji mm -hmm. that is biryani that I learned from a friend from India mm -hmm. yeah it's a fun page and also there's a there's a photo that I, a video I show of how you can make a cake without an oven oh yeah I don't know if we have that video uh, do we have okay we might not have that video but how yeah. how then maybe you can just explain it how would you bake it uh, uh, the baking, I would say baking it's like much, it's one plus one mm -hmm. is two. So you have to follow your ingredients, but make, making it without an oven, I use like a big sufuria with a gas, so that one is going to act like a conventional oven. Mm. And then the small sufuria you put the butter in, and then it has to be closed, totally closed, where the air has to circulate, circulate in around. within. Okay. Yeah, and then you should time it like 30, 30 minutes per se and you for me the cake was easier to make it in okay. the house yeah okay and the texture was still fine. the texture was still fine it was interesting yeah interesting okay um so you've talked about having also traveled to india you've been able to travel to the u.s as well and experience their food cultures do you have like a food culture um bucket list uh, of places that you'd really like to go and experience uh, their food I wouldn't say I have a bucket list. I would like to say that I really love, I told you, as I told you, I, I really love to travel. So if today I'm told to go to China and I'm getting an opportunity to go and try their food and learn their ways, I would actually go and know how it goes because I love food. I'm a foodie, I'm a chef, it's my passion. And also tr and uh, using it to travel, it's a plus plus mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. I get to meet new people and I get to taste their own cuisines because when I when I travel, I met a lot of different people and people who have different tastes. So when you cook for someone, whatever I like, they'll be like, I don't like it. So I have to learn it their way. Okay. But in as far as uh, different cuisines, of course, there's French cuisine, mm -hmm. there's the Caribbean styles, there's African styles, there's uh, Asian cuisine. Um, are there sort of highlights about each of those sort of uh, cuisines that really stand out? Yeah, mm -hmm. in all the cuisines, like different cuisines, like the Indians, they love they love spicy food, and I would say Asian is more of sweet chili. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, you know the American base, they're not they, they're not into spicy a lot. Mm -hmm. Jamaicans they love chili food, so different cuisines have their own. I would say ta I'll say taste buds. That's why that's why. I love talking about flavor. I'm not of a person who has a general cuisine that I like, mm -hmm. and I would like people to change that aspect. Okay. Yeah. To into flavor. Into more flavor. More flavor. Taste it if you don't like it, but never hear stories about like I don't like this. Okay. Our friend doesn't like this. Taste it and then judge it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, very interesting. So, um, what are your kind current expectations and what are you hoping to do? I know you have a page. Are you then catering for people? Are you cooking for people? Are you hoping to set up your own business? Um, tell us a bit about that. I'm hoping to set up my own business, but 
The pandemic has really hit everyone hard. Sure. Yeah, but I've gotten some, like at my page if you'd seen, I've gotten some like the Zulu mates. They send me a package of their meat. I make a recipe for them. So I'm just, right now I'm just at the house mm -hmm. getting the small business and opportunities. Uh, as I said, I'm a, I'm a very open person. That's why I want to open my own facility where I, I can change people's aspect in food. Okay. Yeah, sitting at home and creating something new is something that I like, not okay. going by the books. All right. Great. Well, um, uh, as we wrap up here, maybe you can let us know once again how people can find your page and uh, uh, and be in touch with you. Yeah, so my page in Instagram is flavorfetish underscore ke. Mm -hmm. And I also have a Twitter account, Chef Jojo's Kitchen. Okay. I try to keep up with it, but Twitter <laughs> is a little bit hard for me. Okay. In Facebook, it's Georgina Wambogo. I also post some short recipes there. Okay. Yeah, most of my cook pages, I just... I just like focusing it with food, not my personal life. Okay, that's yeah. fine. Well, thank you so much uh, for coming on to the show. Thank a young you. chef, uh, really passionate about food and uh, where you want uh, things to go. So we do appreciate you coming and just sharing a bit of your perspective as well with us. Thank you for having me. You're most welcome. All right. With that said, we need to take a break now as we get ready uh, to still talk about some more food. Uh, now we have another chef uh, from the Boma International Hospitality College. We have Chef Robert Kabia, or Kabia and uh, he's going to be helping us prepare a pan-fried minute steak for breakfast. Triple one, triple four, triple one is the SMS line. And I'll be back after this. <laughs> 